Hi, welcome back. As my daughter comes in and gives you guys a thumbs up, she must like you. All right, so this is the walkthrough for 10 4 inscribed angles. We're just going to go briefly over um, what needs to happen and make sure that you have your notes available to you off to the side so that way you can reference um, the formula and a little bit of the algebra work that was done. So looking at number one, you're being asked to find the measure of arc AB. And that means this arc right here. Remember that the measure of the arc is going to be the same as the measure of the central angle. We should probably add that to our notes really quick, shouldn't we? So um, just as a reminder, the measure of an arc is equal to the central angle that creates it. Even if there is no central angle showing, like in this one, we don't have a central angle showing that's creating arc AB, we can still pretend, we can still sketch one in and be like, uh, that looks like it's the center of the circle. So this angle right here, you have to name the center something not already shown. But that angle right there is the same as the measure of the arc. And according to my formula, the measure of this inscribed angle is half of the measure of this central angle or the measure of the arc that the inscribed angle is showing. Which means since this is what I'm looking for, I can use this formula and just replace the measure of the central angle with this unknown variable here and then solve it. This is going to look almost exactly like the example that was done for you in the previous video, inscribed angle measures. Looking at number two, you have something very similar, but this time you're given the measure of the arc and you're being asked to find the measure of the inscribed angle again use that formula from before and it should be no problem here we go again asking for the measure but this time of being asked for this measure you're being asked for the measure of arc jk that's the arc that goes from j to k following the shortest path possible. You always want to make the shortest arcs. Now, notice that this 26 degrees is talking about this angle right in here. So you'll be able to use that to calculate the measure of this piece of this circle, that little bitty arc. And then here's a central angle right here, this straight line from K through the center through L. So you'll need to recall what the measurement of this semicircle is. Please review the notes on semicircle. It gives you the measure of that semicircle. And then once you know what this one is right here, you'll be able to then figure out that you're interested. Looking at number four, you're being asked to find the measure of Q. That's this angle right here couple things that you need to remember is that an entire circle is 360 degrees. You're given two parts. You need to find the measure of arc PM. So you can use the fact that all three of these arcs together are going to equal 360 to then give you this arc measure, which then you can use your formula to calculate the measure of your inscribed angle. Okay, we're going to look at number five and we'll spend some time on number five. I'll actually work out a little bit of it for you here to help you out with the algebra. We're needing to find the measure of W and Y. So we need to find the measure of this angle in here. Let me go ahead and color code a little bit for you. We're going to find the measure of this angle right in here. That's supposed to be red. It didn't show up very well. I'm sorry and the measure of y, which is this angle right in here. Now, there's a couple things that you need to keep in mind as we're looking to see to solve this problem. 
And the first thing is, uh, as you hear me clattering around, I'm digging through my pencil box to find some highlighters here, um, is what things are similar. So if I look at angle Y, and I look at the angle that is being inscribed in the circle here from Y, it looks like it's creating this arc WX. And so I can use my formula from before the, that the measure of this interior angle is one half the measure of this arc, rather the central angle that creates that arc, but we'll go ahead and say the measure of that arc, okay? So I can use this concept to help me figure out what the measure of this arc is going to be. Let's do that very quickly. Need some paper here. You know, I'll do it off here to the side. So I'm told that the measure of the inscribed angle, which in this case is Y, I guess I can do it here, right? So the measure of angle Y is equal to one half of the measure of arc WX. So that's my starting bit of information. I already have some information on the measure of Y. I'm told that the measure of Y is found by 2x plus 2. So now I have an equation that looks something like this. We're back to that very similar setup that we saw in our notes on inscribed angles when we were trying to get rid of that one half. We did that by multiplying through by that fraction's denominator, which was 2. And when we did that, we got rid of the denominator and it disappeared from the right hand side. So I'm going to go ahead and do that trick again. We're going to multiply both sides by 2. And I'm using the square bracket, not for any um, special purpose other than I've got some round parenthesis brackets over here and double round parenthesis brackets always hurts my head. So I'm using square brackets to make some sort of difference. As evidenced by the fact that I immediately switched back to the round parentheses on the next step. Now from here, I'm gonna go ahead and do some distribution so I can get rid of those parentheses. So there's my distribution right here, 4x plus four. That is the measurement of arc WX. Awesome. But how does that get me any closer to figuring out what the measure of Y is? All that told me was the measurement of this arc, which I can write in now. Well, if I notice this arc W X is created by another inscribed angle. It's also created by this angle right here. And this angle has a measurement of 3X minus 23. So I can do the very similar technique to what I just did here with the measure of angle Y, except now I can write uh, more, uh, how do I say it? I can write a more clear equation. All right, so let's start with our formula. The measure of angle Z, the measure of my inscribed angle, equals one half the measure of the arc that it creates, which is this one. Filling in what I know, the left-hand side becomes 3x minus 23, and the right side becomes one half times 4x plus 4. All right, I can do that same trick of clearing the fraction or I can divide everything on the right-hand side and only the right-hand side by two, which is basically the same as me distributing this one half here. That's what you're gonna see me do in this example. I have three X minus 23 on the right, and it just, uh, excuse me, on the left. I'm gonna distribute this one half through across to the right-hand side. One half times four is the same as Four divided by two, that's two. And once again, a two. And so now this equation is in a format that I'm then able to solve for X. So go ahead and do that, solve for X. And once you have a value for X, you have an expression for Y. This is the measure of angle Y. Once you have this value for X, then you can do some substitution and generate a value for the measure of angle Y.
Awesome, you'll have number six done. Let's look back at the figure and know that number five is asking us to figure out what the measure of angle W is. That's this angle right here. But here's the thing is I don't know much more information about this than that. But I just found the measure of angle Y. I did that in the previous step. Notice the figure right here. This figure that has been created is a triangle. And we know that the triangle angle sum is 180 degrees. I have found the measure of this angle. I'm told that the measure of this angle right here is 22. And so I can subtract off from 180 to give me this angle right in here. Because these are vertical angles, they are angles that share a vertex and their sides create two straight lines that intersect like this. This measure is also the same as this one we just generated. Because I've got a value of x right here in this previous step way toward the beginning, I also have the measure of angle z, and I can once again make use of my triangle angle sum to give me the measure of angle w, which is the answer to question number five. Very similar process for seven and eight. The figure is different and has a little bit more information. You will do very similar items to what you did for five and six here on questions seven and eight. Moving forward, we're looking at questions nine and 10. Once again, you're looking at the same sort of information. Uh, you've got some uh, looks like a diameter here, which means we've created a semicircle along A through C on this side. You've also done that again here on A through B towards C. So we've got some semicircles going on. Please refer, refer back to the video on semicircles to figure out what the measure of that arc is. You can then use that to generate a degree measure for B which then will allow you to use, once again, our dear friend, the triangle angle sum to write an equation with the measure of this angle, this angle, and this angle. Allowing you to solve for x, then you just substitute back into where you need in order to calculate the measure of the angles that you were looking for. Almost done with our walkthrough. Here's what uh, the figure for 11 and 12 looks like. Looks a lot more complicated than what we've done already, but just be mindful of what it is that you're seeing. Notice um, that we've got some sort of quadrilateral in here. So think back to your quadrilateral angle sums. Make very heavy use of your quadrilateral angle sums to figure out the measures of all of these angles added together. There's also a couple things that you need to know. First off is there's no markings telling me whether this thing is a parallelogram or not. So I'm not going to be able to immediately state that this angle E is congruent to this angle G. But I do know a couple other things. <clears throat> this arc being related to this angle. And this arc being related to this angle. And so we'd like to take a, a moment to list out all the things that we know. Yes, we have the quadrilateral angle sum saying everything here is 360, but with more than one variable, that one equation by itself isn't enough. So I'm going to take a moment. I'm going to list out everything that this particular diagram tells us. Okay, and I'm going to move the diagram off to the side so that I have plenty of room here on my, on my line piece of paper. Excuse me, I have the hiccup. Okay. So here's what we know just from this diagram. We know <clears throat> that the measure of angle EHG is equal to 6Y minus 4. That's the first thing that I know. The next thing that I know from this diagram is that the measure of angle EFG, which is that other arc, is 5y minus 3. Okay. So let's go ahead and take a quick look at our diagram again. There's our diagram. We have angle EFG, 5y minus 3. 
and EHG 6Y minus 4. So that's the first thing that I know. The next thing that I know is that if I take the measures of those two arcs, namely this pink arc right here, arc E through F toward G, and I add it to the measure of this purple arc, E through H toward G, I'm going to get one full revolution around the circle, 360 degrees. So the measure of arc EFG plus the measure of arc EHG equals 360 degrees. And then, because this arc here, EFG, is being created by this inscribed angle, EHG, I can use my formula from the previous lesson stating that the measure of that inscribed angle is equal to one half times the measure of the arc that it inscribes. This allows me then, by multiplying both sides by two in order to clear that fraction, to say that two times the measure of the inscribed angle gives me the measure of the arc. And this is important for one very, very big reason. Once I have the measure of the arc sitting all by itself on one side of the equation, I can then replace it into this equation right up here. I'm gonna go ahead and write the same sort of relationship for the other inscribed angle so that you can see what happens when we start combining these kinds of equations. <laughs> all right, there we go. I've gone ahead and written out all the equations and I'm gonna go ahead and rewrite this one one more time. But this time I'm going to add in some color just so that you can see where everything is going. So I'm gonna make this equation, this arc right here, um, red in my current uh, work, and then this arc in blue. So the measure of arc EFG plus the measure of arc E hg needs to equal 360 degrees using my replacements here this is what i can replace the measure of arc efg with so two times the measure of angle e hg plus two times the measure of angle ef that needs to equal 360. But I know what the measure of angle EHG is. It's right up here, 6Y minus 4. Likewise, I know the measure of angle EFG. That's 5Y minus 3 up here. So I'm going to go ahead and make those substitutions. Two times the measure of angle E. HG plus two times the measure of angle EFG <coughs> equals 360. And now, while the equation looks a little complicated, it's much easier to solve because now I'm only looking at one variable as opposed to big names of things that don't seem to make any sense. I'm going to do some distribution. do distribution to both of those items. I'm going to go ahead and combine like terms. If you're following along, please make sure that I have um, done all my additions and subtractions properly. I, I tend to make those up. I'm going to go ahead and add 14 to both sides. And then divide by 22. Oh, I don't do this in my head very well, so... Uh, 
uh, yeah, whatever that value is, and that'll be the value of y. But looking at the directions, remember you're not being asked what the value of y is, though you need it. Number 12 is actually asking for the measure of angle h. So whatever value you got for y, you have to then substitute back into h, that's 6y minus 4, to figure out what the measure of that angle is. Repeat the same similar process, but here at E and at G in order to find the value of X that then you can replace into here to give you the value of G. This one was definitely the most complicated question that we had on there. Let's go ahead and look at the next one. <clears throat> the next question is a probability question. This means that we're definitely gonna have some fractions involved parts divided by wholes. What this paragraph reads is, in circle V, that means circle with center V, point C is randomly located so that it does not coincide, that means falls on top of, with points R or S. So here is my circle with its center V. I have a point C somewhere, so anywhere on the circle that I want, just so long as it doesn't land on top of R or on top of S. Otherwise, C can be anywhere you, you want it to be. If the measure of arc RS is 140, what is the probability that the measurement of angle RS, RCS is 70? All right, so here we go. If this arc measures 140 degrees, we need to know what is the likelihood that the inscribed angle here is 70 degrees. Well, let's see if our formula can help us out. So we're going to look at our formula that said that the measure of the inscribed angle, which in this case is angle C, and I'm going to shortcut it and just write the vertex, angle C, that is equal to one half times the measurement of the arc in question. <clears throat> Originally, we had it written as the, the measure of the central angle. But remember, the central angle is what controls the measurement of the arc. And so you could replace that. I know that the measurement of the arc is 140 degrees. That's what I was told. And one half of 140 is 70. So as long as the arc between R and S measures 140, then regardless of where C is, the measure at C is always going to be 70. And so the probability is 100% certainty. It should always end up this way. All right, that concludes the walkthrough for 10-4. I hope that that helped you out, and we'll see you in class. Bye.